Dear Diary, 4th of February 2018, 11pm UK time. How you doing? Um, this is probably going to be a long one, drawn out, and um, it's partly why I've got the music on in the background, because, you know, for the gaps that there will inevitably be, <laughs> I don't know, um, it's very much one of my just, you know, don't really know, haven't got it structured, what I'm going to talk about, but I do feel genuinely that things uh, need to be said are things are going to be said. <laughs> Um, just a quick update since I made the last video last there's two videos calling AJ Miller the Antichrist well um, as far as it's gone on sort of seeing how I feel about what I've said and seeing what the days have brought been kind of a mixed bag but um, more sided on the blessings the only slight negative things I felt is I felt this sort of extra sort of frustration with things um, trying to figure out um, what where this all might sit and is there any sort of scriptural stuff and there is scriptural stuff but then I go to look at it in the scripture and reading it in context and what comes before and what comes after just kind of makes no sense but particularly I've been looking in Revelations and it seems Revelations just, just doesn't seem to make any sense <laughs> whatever you try and link it to and it's made me a bit skeptical like at the end of revelations where it says about anyone changes this anyone adds to it or takes away from it there will be their portion will be taken away from or added to by god or whatever and you know it just seems a revelation just seems sort of Seems to go on and on and on. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven plagues, seven bowls of wrath, and just and just some of the stuff in it. You know, he's got the uh, I don't know what was it, the body of a leopard, the f mouth of a lion, and the feet of a bear, and and you see, you know, that sort of coming from Daniel. It just sometimes seems like. Just there is this made up stuff for what reason but then because you know the end is all good then it's like yeah I want to believe it you know cool that'd be cool but so yeah I just don't know and it makes me think they say you know read the Bible this is the Israelites GMS Israelites they say you read a little here you move on you read a little you move on you read a little and you know maybe the Bible just does contain lines of of wisdom and truth which are being revealed gradually and you pick up on bits at a time but what has struck me and I is that it's almost exactly and I did no way plan this, I think you believe me on that, I'm not a planner. That um, from the time I found Divine Truth on YouTube, 
to the time where I made that video calling AJ Miller the Antichrist, pretty much exactly three and a half years. And this three and a half years thing, I think the, the thumbnail for this video I'm going to choose is a picture I took of the mileage of my car uh, the other day, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, <laughs> uh, just gone, so I think it was the day after I made the videos, anyway, and my car mileage was 266666, so that was worth the picture, and then the trip teller is 312 three and a half and it was just sort of weird like oh. and it was like me realizing that like exactly like I'm sure it was the end of July 2014 when I first watched a video from Divine Truth and coming to the conclusion or just in a sense you know, okay, Antichrist, you know, what is that? We might get into that later or will. But, you know, deciding, okay, you know, there's no, there's not going to be any teamwork with him. Stop sort of putting him as a sort of a higher source of information for myself. You know, I'd, and just sort of move on after that phase, that that's exactly three and a half years. And in the, so, got, so in, in my mind, like, something big happened to me September 22nd, 2014, which I have, you know, allocated some thanks towards AJ Miller, but, you know, whether he knew about it, you know, it's a different thing. Anyway, so there will be a three and a half years since that began on March 22nd this year and I you know I knew that was coming up because three and a half year thing for me has been a thing before I I lived in Norway for three and a half years and I just find it interesting that this is this period of time which seems quite I don't know what what is it about the period three and a half years 42 months is it 1260 days or 1290 days I'm not quite sure 1260 I think but it gets brought up a lot in the Bible a time times and half a time three and a half the whole thing with the um, pineal gland and the, the death for three and a half days as they say or you know I'm not sure about that in my own experience of feeling milk and honey it wasn't it wasn't that anyway I'm mumbling Mumbling, bumbling. Um, but what, what, what was quite interesting, my law of attraction is, um, it just suddenly seemed to change something. And I'd got some comments from people that I like, who haven't sort of commented on my videos for a long time. <laughs> Uh, Lisa Tully was one, and um, Atlantis Yearning, another. Um, and then, you know, obviously they've seen the video, so, you know, that's a prompt. But, um, there are more things in my personal life. Uh, a customer sort of responded to you know made contact with me and also um someone who's putting on a alternative healing event phoned and invited me to come and do some sort of talk or some sort of thing to to aid their event and um i responded with what my idea would be and that got a good reception so that's going ahead um, and my dreams, 
um, and this happened straight away, suddenly I was around lots of people and my dreams for the past few years have quite often been on my own or doing my own thing in the dream sort of in a sense not with you know sort of more cut off and and then suddenly I'm having dreams where I'm, there's just loads of people around <laughs> um, so it's kind of it's all and when I'm feeling as well feeling about it um, I'm getting encouraging feelings that I'm doing the right thing even calling him the Antichrist which probably isn't can't be correct like the Antichrist but more like an Antichrist but that 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 is the, the kind of the correct feeling that um, even though he's talking truth he's also talking fallacies and if anyone's believing these fallacies that he's saying it's not going to do any good and he's quite possibly being a big hypocrite as well not seeing his own addictions not seeing his own faults there's you know i keep remembering this um channeling mary did with a celestial spirit back in 2016 i think it was and she connects to this spirit and you can you can feel the difference in in mary and her voice and it's really really like there is someone else in there someone loving and then she says something about and all that you were doing like referring to divine truth those two these things that you are doing and as she says that it's like there's something nasty underneath in that what you're doing and and at that point mary seems to lose contact and for the rest of the the channeling she's just you know doesn't get it back <clears throat> but you know this shouldn't be that surprising because anyone who doesn't allow themselves to be challenged anyone who even he says himself he could be wrong but he won't he won't be challenged he won't be challenged on this this is the way he says it it's his way or the highway you know so anyone like that anyone who just completely cuts off to any possible discussion on any subject basically is uh you know that's a warning sign completely so yeah uh, so i could rephrase it and say aj miller is an antichrist but looking at the the, the bit of revelations with the beast i mean some of those things could apply to him like blaspheming against god against the name of god he's taken the name of God for himself and blaspheming God's realm heaven you know he talks about uh, when you get to higher levels in the spirit world that you can make multiple spirit bodies you know and um, I just can't I can't I do feel like this is a blaspheme against what is possible in the realm and the way he talks about how people are in anguish for so many years you know and because he's got the the history of the world he says that humans have been around for two three hundred thousand years so adam and eve was two or three hundred thousand years ago you know this is sort of elongating the suffering and everything else which is blaspheme and also, AJ, you know, he's made the conclusion, he's decided, you know, our mother and father God is infinite. But I do feel like AJ at this point is talking about um, love, the ultimate existence that there is that runs through every entity that exists, including our mother and father, God. But our mother and father isn't all of it. Our mother and father has brothers and sisters. A mother and father has a mother and father. 
So our mother and father is not infinite. Our mother and father has made a finite number of children, denoted by the number of black holes in the universe. So God isn't infinitely making more and more children, which is what A.J. Miller says. So again, distorting what is the truth. And any of these distortions is going to cause people who believe him and follow his way, they're going to cause, him, cause themselves anguish. Because the, the, the picture isn't going to make sense. So, so I'm not um, taking back what I said. And I do feel there is a certain amount of um, something against me in particular. Um, and I do still think that I may well be God's Christ on earth. I can't say 100% and I can't prove it. But I do feel that there's some truth in this. And um, I'm going to talk about that as well. But I can, I can see from, you know, let's talk, say Yeshua ben Joseph, right? He's the Christ on earth. He's feeling some amazing things, learning some amazing things, sharing this healing, right? And in his prime, people kill him. It's all God's path, and at the time he was cool with it, you know. He goes all through the spirit world doing good and race up levels and, you know, he's just doing good after good after good. And then he gets to the point where he wants to come back to earth. Now, maybe this wasn't in God's plan. Maybe, you know, it's hard possible for me to really think about it but having come back now not being the Christ now just being a normal bod and obviously with some issues from the previous life a kind of a, a hate for the people in a way because people killed him and um, then to, to meet the Christ again would remind him of you know what he once was on this earth 2,000 years ago. And this may well have ignited some sort of resentment towards God and God's plan and perhaps subconsciously going about trying to do it another way or um, so I can just I can just get this feeling that the that there's this that there's this thing going on that there's this issue that AJ Miller has with God and God's plan and and what's going on and yeah Um, it's it's wrong of me just to sort of go on and on about another person, but I know there's a certain amount of interest in this person, and quite a lot of you, or some of you, are the people watching my videos, and um, so I I feel it's uh, that's the reason to talk about it. And uh, I mean, what, 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 what they've done just recently? Just like, how many videos on forgiveness and repentance? Just, whoa! Once they get started, they really, really get into it. So this word, Christ. People talk about Christ consciousness, which I think is fine, and I think it is something we can all achieve. 
everybody. Um, and I would say that I've already achieved it. It's the Christ consciousness is what Yeshua would have achieved. I believe Francis of Assisi would have achieved and what I would have achieved. And that what everybody will be able to achieve now. And some may have already achieved it. And so unlike someone like St. Julian talking, you know, he's got all his information from books, he does his own experimenting, but I think he's way too busy to be able to have um, done some of the things needed to fully feel that actual experience. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. But this is, I believe, the level where you get when you understand that you are part of this eternal tree of life and the, the life force that is eternal and infinite and was always there, always existing, is love. And feeling that is part of you. So like our soul is made of love and but it's it's an entity in itself. It's like a. I think of it like you know, hit, say here's love is the shaft of light, and then our soul is like something which. The light goes into and has an effect because of the soul. And and that is what we are. And we are capable of creating love. You know, and that, that's amazing to anything, any love you make, any creation of love that you do is, a, is eternal. The love, the love is the eternal thing, the only thing of substance. Anything else will be temporary. So if you create some love that is permanent forever. You know, that's that's the most amazing thing. And so how do we make love? Well, we make it in our interactions with all the other entities, our mother and father, all of each other, ourselves and our soulmate, existence itself. So, so that's how I would define it. And that when people say, oh, we're all one, that is the only way in which we're all one, in the sense we're all made of love. You know, the first few times I felt this fully is very, it was very daunting, it was very scary. Because you almost think you can, because you don't know the truth for sure yet, you almost feel like you d you're going to discover that it's fraud. <laughs> that you're going to be able to zap it out of existence. But after a few times of having experienced it, I'm sort of brave enough to go, okay, I'll imagine nothing exists. And you just, you just can't, you just so straight away, something has to exist. So. But the first few times you're there and, and everyone will have to experience that. Everyone will have to feel that for themselves. That's where the T-junction is, where you decide are you going to choose to love or not. And of course you are, you are going to choose to love. You're made of love. And uh, 
you know, this has been done many, many times. It's always different. And there's something for the first time today. I, instead of looking back towards what's so feel like I'm sitting there feeling God, I'm always looking back towards what's gone before. Like looking towards God in a sense. Always looking back down that eternal tree. And today for the first time I saw that, you know, we are the ones, we are looking out into newness, into unexplored territory. Because although it's been done however many times before, it's still new, it's still different every time. Yeah, the future is unwritten. Yeah, and that got me thinking how much of what's going to happen has God planned. I'm sure God has a plan, but I imagine perhaps God doesn't know exactly what we're going to do. Not exactly. And, yeah. I do feel this week, this week is going to be interesting. I mean, the Winter Olympics and North Korea and South Korea hosting it together. Can North Korea be trusted? You know, it's all been quiet on the scene since they've arranged this you know so I had a couple of things written down uh, God's Truth Facebook group. I was, um, you know, when Yeshua washes the feet of his disciples and says, I want you to do this for each other. You know, you don't need to wash your whole body because you, you're clean. You know, so it, once you've been through, you're born again, you're clean. But you go out walking here and there, you're going to pick up some dirt. You know, you're going to make mistakes, and why should we wash each other's feet? Well, because it's easier. Because it's harder for us to see our own issues, you know. It's easy for other people to see other people's issues often. And so, you know, that's what I think he means. It's so we can we can be open and honest with each other and just just say what we think and you know the other person can take it on open-minded and maybe come back and say actually I think you're wrong I think you got this wrong or yeah actually I think you're right you know because what's the problem with that you know we are being tested continually so um, friends can help each other out just washing feet think it believe it it be what it be <laughs> yeah we've had a lot we get a you know we, you do create your own reality you create your own reality so what you believe will be your reality as long as you believe that you know but if what you believe is out of line with what it, there is and is. So whether you believe it, it doesn't change the reality of it. 
for everybody else or for God. And it's God's, God's truth, which is the truth. So you can believe something wrong and it will change your reality. But it's still wrong. And it will lead to fear and unhappiness when it's out of line with the truth. So think what you like, believe what you like. You know, if you think that you could change the past, you're wrong. Because how would we have any sort of stability whatsoever if you could change the past? And it doesn't matter how far in the future you believe that they'll be able to change the past. If there is a human race in the future, and you believe that changing the past is possible, then at some point they'll be able to do it. And that point they'll be able to mess up our whole reality. The whole Mandela thing, they're always picking on things that you wouldn't have paid much attention to in the past. You know, little differences here and there with words, apostrophes, whether some cartoon character had a tail or not, or pointy ears. You know, the things that we never really would have taken much notice of. Here's one, the mon Monopoly. They, I heard someone say the Monopoly guy had a monocle. Now, when you think of a Monopoly guy, cane and top hat, you can quite easily just think, yeah, monocle, yeah. You know, that's kind of quite typical. And of course we would have seen images like that before. Top hat, cane, monocle. We would have seen images like that. Then you look at the Monopoly balls, oh, he hasn't got a monocle, okay. Well, wouldn't have paid any attention or notice to that in the past. Would have just been getting the Monopoly board out and let's have a game Monopoly. Wouldn't have been worrying about whether the guy was wearing a monocle or not. You know, if the part, if you could change the past, if it was possible, uh, there would be no stability whatsoever. And parallel universes. Well, there are other universes, millions and billions and billions and billions of other universes. But they'll be different. You probably can't imagine how different they could be. That's something we're probably going to learn. Um, they're not millions of universes with me in it, but wearing a red jumper. You know, what, what's the point in that? You know, I, I wake up every morning, me. Whatever I think during the day and during the night and however high meditation I get or whatever, eventually I drag myself to bed, I have a little dream and I wake up in the morning, it's another day. It's another day being me. I can't get out of it. I need to to live it. I'm not in a parallel universe as well. It's not the truth. Uh, so yeah, I get. I read like Revelation thirteen seven over and over again. I thought there was something in there about the Antichrist being revealed. Um, but it doesn't even mention Antichrist in Revelations. Antichrist is only mentioned in John four times. And one of the times it's Antichrists. That there will be Antichrists, not just one. And it, it, that was what was frustrating me. And couldn't find any... Answers nothing, showing me anything in that revelations. Just wasn't getting it at all. 
I just want, so I've written here the elect and multitude, and this is something I was thinking about. You know how, and I was sort of thinking, you know, could AJ Miller be the first beast and his guy Nicky the second beast and stuff? And the only bits that add up is the blasphemy against God and his dwelling place. Um, but um, because it says how they deceive the whole world and the whole world will worship second beast and stuff so it just doesn't, you know, because the whole world isn't but it was, it was making me think about the elect and the multitude now, so what I was thinking is you know, most people, let's say so multitude most people are so totally unaware of of many many things their their life is is totally you know tunnel vision they got their family that they were brought up by that did things this way and they've been doing things a certain way and they've been working for somebody else to pay the bills and they're busy 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 and they perhaps have time to watch half an hour of EastEnders and maybe a film you know but they're just, you know, it's probably fall asleep halfway through the film because they're so, so knackered. And, you know, the sort of people who need to have the radio on to fall asleep. You know, they can't, they can't sit there and think even for ten minutes in silence, you know. Unless they're forced to and then they're probably like just fidgeting, not comfortable, blah, blah, blah. Like... So this is like the multitude. So they're like the shoal of fish. You know, they're, they're going with the vibe, going with the flow, going with the multitude. So the multitude suddenly start being vegetarian. You know, they start thinking, oh yeah, we've got to be vegetarian because everyone else being vegetarian, you know. They're playing that safe thing. We stick together with the big group and then, you know, that makes us safer. And it's true. Um, you know, it's a good job they're not, like, going on YouTube and just believe in everything here, there and everywhere because there is so much bullshit and not just on YouTube but in books and everything else. So, this is the multitude. Now, the elect, those, those who seek truth and find it, I would, that's what I would call the elect, those who seek truth truth those who seek shall find right and that in Thomas actually goes on those who seek shall find and will be disturbed if they endure they will be astonished or astounded I'm not sure which one so these few people may be the sort of few people who stumbled at some point onto divine truth and A.J. Miller's truth and we're caught up because he is clever and he knows a lot of stuff and you, I think people who listen to a certain amount just go look he knows a lot of stuff it, this can't be complete bullshit and, and maybe they have an experience where they dislike something he said but then suddenly they see it and they go, wow, and it's real truth and it's coming to them, which I am one of these. But then, you know, you start taking on the whole lot because we're lazy like that. You know, we, we want to we wanna have found that source of knowledge. And once we think we found that source of knowledge, you know, we're quite happy to just stay there and drink it in. You know, we'll do that. And... Um, the effect it's had with divine truth, as far as I can see, is is it's brought upon quite a bit of misery for people. Uh, you know, and me included too. You know, with this with this pain thing. And I say now that pain is the resistance of a deeper feeling. I'm definitely getting that now. That pain is the resistance when you're resisting a deeper feeling. And that feeling could even be a really nice feeling. But you're resisting it because it's new and you don't know yet. 
I often sit down and meditate and I just think, well, what's next? What's next on my soul? What's next to come? And I do that a few times and then, you know, it, I, it does, I do tire of it. I, I do, it, it becomes, you know, you do, you know, you can't just do it all in one day and, you know, even you think, oh, it's the perfect day, I've got spare time, blah, blah, blah. that kind of makes it even worse because you're trying to force it, that doesn't work. So much a letting go thing. Anyway, so doing bits. Then at some point it comes there, I'm not doing it. The pain builds up. And um, eventually I go, right, that's enough for now. And I'm busy myself with something else. But, you know, I'm never going to get away from it. That is always going to be there. It's always going to be mine. Until it's finished. Whatever it is. And I... I do see that we're all in this together. But so these elect, these are very important people. You know, they're the ones that God that taken on this purpose to be a seeker, to find that truth. And if you if you deceive them, you could say you deceive the whole world. Because the multitude are kind of waiting to see what these seekers, where they go and what they come up with. Sort of like we're all connected on that way. And this vibe. And it's, I mean, it's okay, it's going to be fine because God, God's got it covered, so it's all going to be fine stuff so well yeah so that was the possibility how you, how it could be ramped up the repercussions of, of what the divine truth movement could be doing so Oh, yeah, yeah. So a big part of this, a big part of this is about the name, the name, the hallowed name. And it's my belief that Yeshua ben Joseph discovered the hallowed name and started healing in this name. And so others around him might have said, referring to this name, that this was his name, that this was his name because he discovered it. And like when the disciples said to Yeshua, look, there are others there healing in your name. And he was okay with it. He was like, oh, that's fine, let them. So this name, Jesus, the name of our mother and father, a hallowed name. And yes, so in the Monty Python film Life of Brian, there's this scene where they're uh, gonna stone someone because they said the name Jehovah. But I look, there's no, there's no scripture whatsoever that says you're not allowed to say the name of God. Only that you're not allowed to blaspheme the name or use the name in vain. So why in the Monty Python sketch did they have this scene? This is, a, this is what I'm on about, where all the answers aren't in scripture. In a sense, things have sort of, there seems to be knowledge within us that is beyond scripture. That there just seems to be a vibe, a feeling in people, they know something. And so, okay, so it's, you know, the Monty Python writers were properly educated. You know, they went to pretty posh schools. So they would have learnt some stuff that they don't teach everybody. 
So they put this scene in the film. But where does it come from? Why? Now, if people were healing in the name of Jesus and miraculous things were happening, you could then see how the Pharisees might make it ban the use of this name. Anyone heard saying this name, the name of God, would be stoned. And is that why Stephen was stoned? who's been saying the name of God. And is the film The Life of Brian prophetic? When they said that Brian had been a very naughty boy. He'd been a very naughty boy. Like when the prophetic of 2,000 years later, when he comes back, and he's like Superman gone bad. Because I really do feel that AJ Miller is hiding this part of his life. A part of his life when he began to, when something changed. And I don't know if you'll remember this, and unfortunately it's gone from the internet and I never actually got to listen to it. But when Nikki, Nikki's cousin, I can't remember what his name was, was doing a YouTube video where he interviewed someone and then they got told off for it by Mary saying, and there was something where she said that they had given people the impression or they'd said that AJ had said that you got to go to Africa and smoke some cannabis and get a spiritual experience. And they, this is what they were refuting and that's why the video was taken down. So, you know, if Nikki's cousin who'd been over to Australia, been to one of the sessions, had heard this and told this to someone, there must be some element of truth in it wouldn't have just come from absolutely nowhere. So what is he covering up? So this is why I feel like he may be purposely anti-me. Because if that's... Because I was smoking cannabis, and I'm pretty sure, you know, he was smoking cigarettes. I'm pretty sure he was smoking cigarettes. Um... Because the, the picture I've got of him, which is on the Facebook group, he's, I'm pretty sure he's rolling. And I seem to remember him asking me if he could roll a joint. But he certainly sat in there with me while I was smoking joints. So he would have got the effects of it from just that. And whether he didn't roll one and have one, and that was what kicked off some of his uh, memories coming back and what it was all about. <clears throat> because in my mind I have thought, you know, in terms of me perhaps being the Christ and there's that bit in Revelations again, this <laughs> annoying, in a sense, chapter where it said, you know, there's no one in heaven on our earth who's worthy to open the seals. And Yeshua had already been around. Was he the one sitting in the throne when the lamb who had the mark of slaughter, who had been marked to be slaughtered, came and took the scroll from the right hand? So... <laughs> He kind of does play big in my mind. I'm waffling, I'm wa I know I'm waffling, but I don't know. I feel like I'm in a maze, <laughs> trying to find the way.
trying to find answers to things that, you know, should I even really be concentrating on when I can sit here and feel Mother, Father, God and, and even beyond that, the whole infinite love, eternal tree of life. Partly because, you know, it's no no fun on your own, in a way. I mean, it is fun. It's amazing when it happens. It's always, you know, really, really nice. And can make my day. But what is, you know, I can... I know how the world would be so different when when more and more people understand what they are, what we are. And I know what I've had to do on my journey to get here and I know there aren't that many people who who have the the tools and the the time and the the tenacity to to give it a go and to do it. Um, have all those elements. It's it's quite possible that. You know, I'm the only one. And I'm hearing people getting there very close intellectually. But I know if you've puzzled all this information together through scripture, yeah, if you, like David Vose, is, you know, I've only been listening to him for a few months. I mean, he's made hundreds of videos, so. Don't know him that well yet. But he must have felt a sense of it at least. It does seem as though Babylon is falling. The uh, what's it? Is it the fourth stage? The iron and clay. You know, concrete. This concrete age is crumbling. And. Uh, I guess it's possible, you know, it's perhaps already happening. People are going to have to get with the new way if they want to survive. You're not going to be able to depend on the pills and the pharmaceuticals to keep you alive. In fact, you know wake up and realise that they're killing you. You might have to learn to be able to go time without eating much. Other things, you know, if the internet stop working and how would you deal with that? I mean the country would would be screwed, wouldn't it? So if we've got challenges like that to face and the answer is to go within and seek the help of mother and father You know, the, 
the wickedness has to be purged. This has to be a good world. Because that's how we grow. If we had enough pain and torment and stuff yet to realize that wickedness isn't the way and that love is the only way. Because there are souls who didn't have a decent crack at life before who deserve to come and have a good crack at it. <laughs> because this physical reality is here for a reason. The spirit world is a vault. It's a place where you can repair the damage that you may have done to yourself during your life on earth learn from those mistakes and be able to renew yourself to in order to come back again to achieve something on earth in the physical being proving that it's from your free will because it seems to me that people could um, progress quite well in the spirit world just by following someone else and that can't be the way everyone must learn it for themselves and something else I feel is um, that since 1947, after the Second World War, I think that was a big event. And <clears throat> since that time, I do feel like God has all those people who were born in the first ten generations, so Adam and Eve and all their children, all their children, all their children, ten generations up to Noah that all of those, their spirit body was cut off, done, finished. You're going back to Earth. And that that is the generation that will not pass before the end times. So, 2017, Anyone born in 47, then 70 years old. And that's a generation. So, okay, we're, we're, we're still here. A year later, um, you know, things are getting sorted out. I think it might be the time very soon for the harvest. It's still a big watch this year. Still 5778. That is a divine number. 5778. And upon the completion of the year. So, yeah. I'm, um... Well, I'm very relaxed about it now, to be honest. I'm, um, I'm pretty cool with it. There's, there's uh, plenty for me to be meditating on. And there's big, bigger things <laughs> like um, still sen sensing more and more about the soul, and I do feel like my soul has undergone some levels of transformation in the last few weeks, month, so and that's still going on, I think. And uh ha, yeah. If only I could share what it's like. But um so also, you know, that's why I'm 
I'm hoping that you know other people start to because when you you know like I say I had a born again moment coming up for three and a half years ago and anyone else who feels something like that is going to be ranting about it is going to be shouting about it it's going to be like Wow! So. so, yeah, I've probably bored you. I've gone on long enough. So, you know, yeah, I guess the summary of this is um, no real new full conclusions apart from. Uh, the direction I'm facing on the eternal tree of life, facing outwards. And um, apart from that, just, yeah. Still, still mulling things over. And we'll update soon. Okay, bye.